Today you're coming on set with me as I show you how we do a commercial lingerie e-commerce shoot. It's Gia Goodrich and welcome back to my YouTube channel that's all about helping you master photography. Today, you are coming on set with me as I show you behind the scenes for one of my favorite, favorite clients, Jane's Vanity, and I'm gonna show you how we do e-commerce shoots for commercial lingerie that has a high-end and editorial vibe. And if you haven't already, take a second to subscribe to my channel because every week I come out with new content to help you be the most badass photographer you can be. Today we have 31 looks. Yeah, I, I mean the hair is glorious. Today is a three light setup and it's my favorite go-to for this because it's really beautiful even but has just a touch of drama that really shows all the beautiful detail. This client, Jane's Vanity, is amazing and they have so many sumptuous, glorious pieces. So I really have to make sure that I'm pulling out all that texture, really creating a light that is sculptural and that is gonna show all of that fine detail. So I'm gonna walk you through this lighting setup. The first light, which I always start with, is actually the fill and this is the light that's going to fill in the shadows, but it's not where all the directionality is coming from. My favorite is this lighting scrim situation. The light itself is bouncing into this parabolic umbrella, so it's creating a big light source, and then that is filtered through this really large lastolite scrim. So it's two layers of softening. All right, next one. This key light here is an Elochrome light motive reflector. Inside of this is the same as the parabolic umbrella. The bulb is facing backwards and has a whole bunch of silver here, but instead of this having a scrim in front, it has this panel of diffusion. This, as you'll notice this is where the model is so the light isn't pointed at her this is actually where it's technically pointed this type of light finessing is called feathering third light third light is similar in that instead of it being a parabolic umbrella it's actually a silver umbrella so the light is bouncing into here illuminating the backdrop gonna give her a tiny bit of edge light and that's it let's do turning around a little bit more to the side here like you're owning it a little more hip is great Beautiful, okay, and then let's do round to the back. Good, lots of hip, perfect. The one thing that I really look for in figuring out posing is where my frame is going to hit. If the model's hands are like this, my frame needs to really cover all of that space. So I really communicate with the model and tell them what the frame is at. If it's full body, if it's at the thighs, if it's at the waist, or if it's really tight in, and having that information help dictate what kind of poses they're doing. So this first frame, I'm gonna start at, um, the thigh, and then I'll tell you when we come closer in. Okay, reset your hair so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's gorgeous. Good, good, and you can afford to give a little more hip, yeah, and be a little powerful in this, perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in a bit tighter, so keeping the shape a little bit more controlled. Beautiful, good. Are you wanting to bow it up? And while they're doing that, what I do a lot of times is help direct the model by actually showing things. Of course, I'm, five foot four, so it's not gonna look the same when I do it, but a lot of times if I have an idea of, in mind, I will kind of show them what I'm thinking. Now, Candace is just sort of hitting it, so I'm not saying too much, but typically, depending on where the model is with their experience and everything like that, I tend to really do a lot of directing because from my lens, I have a good understanding of what we need in order to really enhance and show the different features of the garment. And it helps a lot of times if I can just pop up and do it myself. Give me a little powerful side. Beautiful. Love it, so beautiful, yeah. Okay, we did it. For these shoots, I always make sure to shoot tethered so that the images from my camera are feeding right into Capture One Pro. As they come in, it's really important to stay organized. So I come over to where it says naming convention and I put the shoot date 
the look number also. And that way, when we get into the files and we're going in later, it's organized by what look we're on. We have 31 looks today, so I know we're on look 11. One thing that's really brilliant that actually started with one of my assistants is we color code all of the images as they come in. So you'll notice these ones are orange, then the next look is red, the next look is purple. So really quickly, if I'm scrolling to try to find a look, I know when they've ended and when they've begun. So this last look, I start at the bottom, select all the way up to the first image in this look, and then I select all, and then right click, and where it says color tag, I select the color. And I think we're on yellow. Yes, so now I know this is the end of the first look and then this is the beginning of the second. The other thing that's really important to do on commercial shoots is make sure that you're always backing up your files. If my hard drive were to crash, for example, in the middle of a shoot, all of those images that existed before are basically money, money that the client can't get back. So what I have set up is this amazing app called Carbon Copy Cloner. What I like to do is have it set up so in between shots when I'm waiting for the model to change, I just press clone and then it's creating an exact copy in a new location. Good, and let's do the back quickly. Good, and give me a little bit of hip. Yes, that's lovely. Good, and let's do a little bit more to the side now. Yes, I love that energy. Oh yes, this looks gorgeous. So that is a wrap. It's a glorious, fun, amazing day, but also a very long one, so I'm glad to be done. Stay tuned for the next video in the series because I'm gonna show you what we do in post-process to get them all out because that's a hundred and something, I can't do math, 31 times four. 120. <laughs> okay, thank you. Because it's 124 images and sometimes we do over 200 and we have to do it fast and get it done. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and leave a comment, leave that comment, love it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye girl, bye. I'm just gonna talk to the camera. Should have thought what I was gonna say. Okay, hold on, because I was so game showy. Help you become the best. Hubba hubba hubba. Blah blah blah. What am I trying to say?